Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. Okay, today is part two of the 10 cards one kit using the My Monthly Hero July 2017 card kit. And since these are long videos, we're going to jump in with card number one. First off, I have this block stamp that has a wood grain on it. It's from my stash, and I'm just going to stamp that on a piece of white cardstock. And then I'm going to take a stitched rectangle die and go over that and run that through my Big Shot. Okay. Now we have that panel done. I'm going to take an oval die and place that towards the top. And I'm going to cut out an oval circle in that panel. And now that that's done, we're going to flip it over and I'm going to add some um, of my tape here. And then I'm going to make a shaker card today. So I'm going to add a piece of acetate to the back there. I'm going to trim off the top. And then as I was doing this, I thought I better stamp my sentiment now. So I'm going to grab my mini misty and I'll put that panel in there. And I'm going to stamp the sentiment that says, um, hello sweet pea. I think that's an adorable, adorable little sentiment. I'm glad I have that in my stash. To stamp this sentiment, I'm going to be using some Versamark ink. And then I'm going to be using some Nouveau embossing powder. And um, this embossing powder is a hot chocolate, which is a really pretty brown. I'm just going to add that and then go ahead and melt that. I really like um, browns on cards, and I haven't actually. This is the first time I get to use my brown embossing powder, so I already heat set that just to save time. And then now I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to add some foam tape right around my window. And I'm just going to trim that off, and then I'm going to set that aside. We'll finish that in just a little bit. Now for the inside of my shaker window, I'm going to um, do some stamping. So I'm just drawing an outline with my pencil, using that oval die as a, kind of as a guide. And then I'm taking those sweet peas that are in the stamp set, and I'm just going to stamp them all over this window area. I, I think the peas are just so adorable. I just love, love the way they look. And actually, as I was stamping this, um, when I finished coloring them, I thought it looked kind of like one of those um, seed packets, and I thought it was just so cute. I'm going to color these in, but I'm going to um, speed up the coloring process pretty fast. I did keep it in there, though. The sweet peas are very easy to color in. I just used three shades of green, and I used a darker green to color in each of those little itty-bitty peas. And then um, a different green for the leaves. And then I also used the real pretty two shades of pink to color in the flowers. I'm just going to take my eraser now and I'm going to erase all my pencil marks. That way, if I get it crooked, you can't see them. <laughs> kind of a secure or safeguard. <laughs> okay. I think that looks very pretty. I'm going to remove the backing off of this foam tape here. And then instead of using sequins, I didn't want to take away from my little sweet peas. I'm going to be using some seed beads. And I thought since um, it did remind me of like a seed packet, I thought the little seed beads in there would kind of resemble little peas. So I added some um, green ones and then some like clear colored ones. And that's it for my shaker card. Now, the kit did come wrapped up with this real pretty green ribbon. And so I, I'm going to be using that. I'm just going to wrap it around there, trim off the ends, just to add a little bit of uh, femininity, I guess, to my card. <laughs> I'm going to secure it directly to my card base. And that's it. That is card number six, guys. Very simple and easy, but I think it just turned out so sweet. Okay, now we're going to move on to card number seven. 
For card number seven, I'm taking the handmade paper that came in the kit, and I'm taking a rectangle die, and I cut that out with my Big Shot. And then, let's see, we're going to be doing some, some stamping, and I'm going to be using my Zig Clean Color, Clean Color Real Brush Markers, so I'm going to mask off the bottom part of this watercolor paper. And then I'm taking that real small, pretty flourish that's in the stamp set, and I actually did the same effect with card um, one of the cards in part one, and I really loved it. Up there in the corner, you can see the colors that I used. But I'm just using a green and a pink and a yellow. And I'm using um, my markers, just going over that stamp and then stamping it on that watercolor paper in the back. And I just think that effect that it gives is so pretty. I'm going to peel off that mask and then I'm going to place it on top of the images that I just stamped. And then I'm going to go in with some um, Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink, and I'm going to color that bottom part of that handmade paper there. And I was going to um, activate it, but the paper, when I went over it, it already had enough texture, so I thought that looked pretty just the way it was. I'm just going to peel off my, my posty tape, and that's nice for that panel. Then with the extra piece of uh, handmade paper that I had left over, I'm just going to tear it, kind of sloping it, and then I'm going in with that um, Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink, and I'm just going to shade, I want to shade that torn area really heavily, and then lighten up on the bottom. So we have two kind of, two different shades of brown. I took the die that I used to cut out that panel, and I cut out the bottom part of that torn paper. Now I set that aside and then now I have a piece of white cardstock and I'm just going in with the Ice Spruce Distress Oxide ink that came with the kit. In a past kit, um, I think it was around April, I'm not quite sure on which kit it came in, but there was this, uh, I think they call them a fancy die and it was a picket fence. And so I'm going to use that die to create the fence here. And I'm, I'm just going to run that through my Big Shot. I'm going to punch that out. I think this picket fence is just adorable. And then I wanted to do like a whitewash almost to this fence. So um, I, have, I have this white ink. It's a wedding dress. From, it's Memento Luxe, and so I went around the edges of my fence just to give it a whitewash look. Now we need to stamp our images. For the images, I want to use this adorable, well, I keep saying adorable, but I can't help it. I'm taking this water pail, and then also I'm going to be taking that same flourish we used for the stamp as we stamp the background. And I'm using the exact same colors over this floral image as we did in the background. The pink and then the yellow and then the green. And I'm just basically stamping them on top of each other, but I'm shifting them just a little bit so I can get all three colors. And I think that looks so pretty. Now I went ahead and colored in my pail. I, I used um, some browns to color in the pail this time, and I went ahead and die cut those out. And as I was at it too, I did um, stamp the, the bow that came in the stamp set, and I colored it in pink. Now we're going to build our card. I'm going to pop up this fence with some foam tape. I'm just kind of figuring out my, my placement here. I'm going to add the second piece and I'll peel off the backing there. More towards the bottom, I'm going to place it. And I think that looks lovely. And then I'm taking that torn piece and I placed it right over the fence on that bottom corner. 
And then I added my water pail with the flowers tucked behind it. And I did pop those up with some foam tape as well. Now we're going to stamp our sentiment. For our sentiment here, I'm just going to be using some VersaFine ink. And I'm going to stamp the thank you. And then I'm, I'm going to offset for helping me grow just a little bit. And I think this is just a beautiful card to give to somebody. I'm just going to use my tape runner and adhere that to the back. I'm going to be using a standard size eight, uh, standard size top folding A2 size card base. And it's a white card base. I'm just going to place that directly in the center. And I like how the pail kind of overhangs on the bottom and the fence overhangs on the sides. I just think that adds a little bit more a little bit more to the card. But that's it. That's card number 7. Okay, now for card number eight, I cut out a piece of white cardstock here, and for this card, I'm, I got another piece of white cardstock, and I'm using a circle die and a heart die, and I layered them together, and I'm just going to run that through my Big Shot. So I'm going to basically have a circle with a heart on the inside, and then using that circle heart. I placed it on top of that panel. I'm going to put it in my Misty. That way I know where to stamp the sentiment. And my magnets are really strong. You can see every time I put them down, they kind of grab each other. <laughs> um, I guess that's a good thing. And the funny thing is too, when I have the dies, if I have them on my desk, the, the dies will kind of slide to them. <laughs> there are some strong magnets. But I'm going to stamp, uh, stamp the sentiment that says thank you. And then um, in the stamp set, there's um, the second half of the sentiment that says, for thinking of me. Well, I cut that in half, so the of me was not below the for thinking. Now, I want it to be um, side by side. So, I went ahead and added some clear embossing powder, and then I went ahead and heat set that. But here you can see where I where I cut the stamp and then kind of put it side by side. Okay, now this was a very easy card, but I think it turned out really pretty. I'm going to add some foam tape around the edges of this circle. And I'm just going to remove the backing, and I'm going to place that directly in the center of my panel here. Lovely. Okay, now I'm going to grab my eraser. I got a few little smudgies on my card, so I'm going to clean it up a little bit. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to be doing some ink splattering for this one. It was very simple, but I think the colors were just gorgeous. Okay, so I'm taking some, this is worn lipstick, and all of these are Distress Oxide inks. I'm taking Fossilized Amber. I'm taking the Ice Spruce, and then a little bit of the Broken China, and a little bit more of the worn lipstick. Now, if you add vintage photo, those are the oxide inks that I have in my stash. <laughs> so I thought we'd just mix them all together here. First, I added that um, I'm adding a little bit of water to dilute it. It's easier to splatter, and I'm using my paintbrush just to splatter around that whole panel. Um, I first I used the worn lipstick, then I, I'm going in with the fossilized amber, and then I'm going in with the ice spruce, and then with the broken china and the worn lipstick in the middle, I'm going to swish those together to create like a purple. And I'm going to splatter that on my card too. I went ahead and dried that with my heat tool, and then I'm just going to, let's see, I'm going to pop that up. And I thought about using some foam tape, but then I thought I'm going to use some fun foam instead. Um, that way it, it'll mail nice, I guess. It's a pretty solid panel, so fun foam will work perfect. The fun foam that I use is adhesive back, so I just have to add adhesive to one side, peel off that backing, and then I'm just going to place that in the center of my card base. Okay, I think that looks great. 
Now the kit came with these really pretty soft handmade hearts. They're called confetti um, hearts. Well, I guess because they're different colors, but they're beautiful and there's little speckles in them. So I'm taking the pink one and I'm popping it up with some um, foam squares. I'm going to place that pink one right in the center of my circle. And a very simple card, but I think it just looks so pretty. And that's it for that one. Okay, for our next card, I really wanted to use this circle uh, handmade paper. So I'm taking a die, kind of positioning it on my cardstock where I think it, the size wise would be, and I cut that out with my uh, Big Shot. Now, I placed it in my Mini Misty, and I'm going to stamp the sentiment. I'm going to be using the Thank You. Just going to position it in the bottom where I want to put it, and I'm going to be using the, the Distress Oxide ink, the ice spruce that came with the kit. And every time I stamped these, I, I doubled it up just to give it a nice, because the paper is a little bit um, textured. So um, to get a good impression, I doubled up on the ink. Um, I'm, I just raised the thank you right above it. I'm going to stamp the same place, just a little bit higher. And this time I'm going to go in with my Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink. I'm going to do it one more time and then I'm going to shift that paper down and I'm going to stamp thank you right above it again. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be trailing that thank you all the way up to the top part of that handmade paper. So I have um, thank you, thank you, thank you all the way in a row. And the, I have only one of the thank yous that is the vintage photo. The rest is ice spruce. I really wanted one of them to just stand out. And you can see as I'm stamping, I'm just lowering my panel, positioning it, and then stamping again. And I just showed the first few, and then I'm going to show you the finished product here. Okay, I have all that done. I'm going in with my, this is vintage photo, but this is just regular uh, Distress ink. I really wanted those edges of that paper just to to stand out. So I went around all the edges with my Vintage Photo Distress Ink. Okay, next I'm going to take that little flower flourish in there. It's the one that has two flowers. And I'm going to take that uh, Ice Spruce Oxide Ink. I'm going to stamp that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the Vintage Photo Oxide Ink. I'm going to go, go ahead and grab my die. And, well, actually, no, I'm going to grab my water pen. I um, I just want to shade in just a little bit of that flower so there's no white behind it. I want it to be a full color background. And with the oxide inks, the water pen just works so pretty. Now I'm going to cut them out. using the coordinating die here. Okay, I think they look really pretty. This card is going to be very, um, I wanted it to be a very earthy card. So I'm just going to take my two little flourishes and I'm going to crisscross them and I'm going to stick them together using um, some glue dots. And then for my stash I have some of this twine. I also use this twine on part one. I'm going to wrap it twice around my panel and I'm going to tie a knot. Just going to trim off the ends there. And then I'm going to pop that panel up with some um, foam tape. And since um, this twine is a little bit bulky, I kind of went around it. And then I'm just going to directly adhere that to my panel. Now I'm going to take those, I want that heart confetti again and I want to add a little heart to the bottom and this one here has little speckles of color in it it's really pretty and it's like a tan so just using my glue dots I'm going to add that to the just above the brown thank you on my card panel here and then I'm going to go ahead and add my little flourishes since I have my glue dots out I think it would work perfect
just going to position them where I will kind of think they look the best. Kind of at an angle here. Lovely. And then for a finishing touch, I'm taking some more of that twine and I'm just going to tie a bow. A small little bow. And then I'm going to add that to the center of my crisscross flourishes. And I think it, it looks very, very weathered and earthy. I really like this one. I thought it needed just a little bit more so I'm, I took my scissors and trimmed around that um, handmade paper, kind of using that as kind of a guide to where to cut. And then I took some craft cardstock and I cut it down to five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm just going to place that on the bottom part of my card base. And then I, using my tape runner, you can see I'm taping the top part. I just wanted to add a little bit more of that brown in there. I'm just going to trim off the ends. And I think I think this one turned out really pretty. Very different, but very pretty. And I'm glad I added that craft paper. It just made a big difference. Okay, now we're going to be moving on. This is our final card. Um, this one was a little bit detailed, but it, I think it probably my favorite is because it's so bright and fun very cheery for my stash I have this banner die I'm just gonna run that through my big shot and after I did that I thought you know what I didn't like it <laughs> so I'm gonna cut the, the tails off this banner here okay I like the banner because the, the top part of it had two rows of stitching I placed that in my Mini Misty and I stamped the sentiment that says sending sunny greetings and then I did um, I did heat emboss it I used VersaFine to heat emboss the sentiment with some clear embossing powder now I'm going in with some fossilized amber and um, I took a piece of scratch paper and then added some um, temporary adhesive behind it so it stay put and starting from the corner on the top, I'm just kind of um, angling it like sun rays, basically. And then I'm just kind of shading it very lightly. So I have a, like little sun rays coming down. And then the stamp set also had this, this line of stitched. I think it's meant to go with the bumblebee, but I really liked it. <laughs> So I'm taking the fossilized amber at full strength here, and then I'm going over those rays just to intensify them, and then to add a little wonkiness since my lines weren't that straight, I periodically added my stitch lines here and there. And I really like the way this turned out. I mean, it wasn't uniform, but I think it just turned out really pretty. Next, for my stash, I have this yellow cardstock. I'm going to trim it down just a little bit, and I'm going to use that top piece. I'm going to use the thin strip for the top piece and then the thicker strip for the bottom. I wanted to lengthen this panel up just a little bit and so I thought this would be a good way to add a little bit of color. And then I grabbed a piece of orange cardstock and I added, um, made it a thin strip and I added that to the bottom. So it's, oh, it's a bright and cheery card. I'm just going to set that aside and then we're going to color in our images. I have a piece of white cardstock in my Mini Misty, and I'm going to use my um, Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I'm going to stamp the butterfly and this beautiful sweet pea flourish, and this mason jar, and then also this um, the wooden water bucket. Now um, I did skip the coloring because the videos did run long, but I colored the images uh, yellows and oranges and then um, colored in the butterflies with some reds and orange and yellows and then the rest is is basic you, I think you you know what happens when you color <laughs> um, I'm going to take the coordinating dies and I'm going to cut those out and here you can see my mason jar I did stamp the stem of that bouquet inside the mason jar I did use um, VersaFine ink and then I um, use clear embossing powder um, 
when I stamped all my images so they have um, embossing powder on them or they were embossed let's just say that <laughs> I'm going to add some I doubled up some really thin twine and I tied a bow on the very top and then I'm going to pop that whole panel up with some fun foam just going to place that in the center of my card base for this card I'm just using a, a white card base top folding now I'm going to just arrange my little elements on my card here and I popped everything up with some foam tape as well adding the little butterflies and then since I thought this was a bright and, bright and sunny card then I thought I'm going to add some sequins so I just add a few little clear sequins here and there. And that was it. That was card 10, guys. I thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial, part 2. Um, if you missed part 1, um, I'll try and remember. Sometimes I forget. I'll try and remember to add it at the end of this tutorial. But here's a quick look at all 10 of the cards that I made using the My Monthly Hero July 2017 card kit and um, I hope this inspires you gives you some ideas on what to do with this kit I really liked it um, thanks so much for stopping by I wish you a lovely day if you're new and want to see more hit that subscribe button we'll see you soon bye bye